literally unplug the computer. The key thing that's going on now is we're moving very quickly through the capability ladder steps. And I think there are roughly three things going on now that are going to profoundly change the world very quickly. And when I say very quickly, the cycle is roughly a new model every year to 18 months. The first is basically the, this question of context window. And for non-technical people, the context window is the prompt that you ask. So, you know, study John F. Kennedy or something. But in fact, that context window can have a million words in it. And this year, people are inventing a context window that is infinitely long. And this is very important because it means that you can take the answer from the system and feed it in and ask it another question. So I, I want a recipe. Let's say I want a recipe to make a drug or something. They say, what's the first step? And it says, buy these materials. So then you say, okay, I bought these materials. Now what's my next step? And then it says, buy a mixing pan. And then the next step is, how long do I mix it for? You see, it's a recipe. That's called chain of thought reasoning. And it generalizes really well. We should be able in five years, for example, to be able to produce a thousand step recipes to solve really important problems in science, in medicine, in material science, climate change, that sort of thing. That's the first one. Second one is agents. An agent can be understood as a large language model that knows something new or has learned something. So an example would be read all of chemistry, learn something about chemistry, have a bunch of hypotheses about chemistry, run some tests in a lab about chemistry, and then add that to your agent. These agents are going to be really powerful, and it's reasonable to expect, not only will there be a lot of them, I mean millions, but they'll be like the equivalent of GitHub for agents. There'll be lots and lots of agents running around and available to you. And the third one, which to me is the most profound, which is already beginning to happen, is text to action. And what that is, is write me a piece of software to do something, right? You just say it. I mean, can you imagine having programmers that actually do what you say you want? It does it 24 hours a day. And strangely, these systems are good at running, uh, writing code such as language like Python. You put all that together, and you've got infinite context window, the ability for agents, and then the ability to do this programming. Now, this is very interesting. What then happens? There's a lot of questions here, and now we get into the questions of science fiction. I'm sure the three things I've named are happening because that work is happening now. But at some point, these systems will get powerful enough that you'll be able to take the agents and they'll start to work together, right? So your agent and my agent and her agent and his agent will all combine to solve a new problem. At some point, people believe that these agents will develop their own language. And that's the point when we don't understand what we're doing. You know what we should do? Pull the plug, literally unplug the computer. So it's really a problem when agents start to communicate in ways and doing things that we as humans do not understand. That's the limit in my view. And you think again, how, how far off in the future is that? Well, there have been many, many predictions. Clearly agents and these things will occur in the next few years. There won't be one day where everybody says, oh my God. Right. It's more a question of capabilities every month, every six months, and so forth. A reasonable expectation is we'll be in this new world within five years, not ten. And the reason is there's so much money, but there are also so many ways in which people are trying to accomplish this. You have the big guys, the, the three large so-called frontier models, but you have a very large number of players who are programming at one level lower, at much lower cost, who are iterating very quickly. Plus, you have a great deal of research. I think there's every reason to think that some version of what I'm saying will occur within five years and maybe sooner. Well, now, so you say pull the plug. So, two questions. So, how do you pull the plug? But even before you pull the plug, if you know you're already in chain of thought reasoning and you're headed to what you fear, don't you need to regulate at some point that it doesn't get there? Or is that beyond the scope of well, well, a group of us have been working very closely with the governments in the West. We started talking to the Chinese, which of course is complicated and takes time, uh, about these issues. And at the moment, the governments, with the exception of Europe, which is always kind of slightly confused, have been doing the right thing, which is they've set up 
trust and safety institutes, they're beginning to learn how to measure things and check things. And the right approach is for the governments to watch us and make sure we don't get confused in what the goal is. Right? So as long as the companies are well-run Western companies with shareholders and lawsuits and all that, we'll be fine. There's a great deal of concern in these Western companies about liability, doing bad things. Nobody wants to hurt people. They're not, they don't wake up in the morning saying, let's hurt somebody. Now, of course, there's the proliferation problem. But in terms of the core research, the researchers are trying to be honest. Okay, so that's the West. So by saying the West, you're implying that proliferation outside the West is where the danger is. The bad guys are out there somewhere. Well, one of the things that we know, and it's always useful to remind the techno-optimists in my world, there are evil people and they will use your tools to hurt people. My favorite example is that the face recognition stuff was invented not to constrain the Uyghurs. You know, they didn't say, we're going to invent face recognition in order to constrain the minority in China called the Uyghurs, right? But it's happening. All technology is dual use. All of these inventions can be misused. And it's important for the inventors to be honest with that. So in open source, which is, for those of you who don't follow it, Open source is where the source code and in, in models, the weights, that is the numbers that have been calculated, are released to the public. Those immediately go throughout the world. And who do they go to? They go to China, of course. They go to Russia. They go to Iran. Right? They go to Belarus. They go to North Korea. Uh, when I was most recently in China, the vast majority, essentially all of the work I saw, started with open source models from the West, which were then amplified. So it sure looks to me like these leading firms, ones I'm talking about, the ones that are putting, you know, a billion, ten billion dollars eventually into this, will be tightly regulated. I worry that the rest will not. You can see, I'll, I'll give you another example. Look at this problem of misinformation. I think it's largely unsolvable. And the reason is the code to generate misinformation is essentially free, right? Any person, right? A good person, a bad person has access to them. It doesn't cost anything and they produce very, very good images. There are regulatory solutions to that. But the important point is that that cat is out of the bag or whatever metaphor you want. It's important that these more powerful systems, especially as they get closer to general intelligence, have some limits on proliferation. And that problem's not yet solved yet. Everyone agrees that there's a problem. At the moment with China, we're speaking in generalities. There is not a proposal in front of either side that's actionable, and that's okay, because it's complicated. And a lot of this, because of the stakes involved, it's actually good to take your time to actually explain what you view as the problem. So many Western computer scientists are visiting with their Chinese counterparts and trying to say, if you allow this stuff to proliferate, you could end up with a terrorist act, right? the misuse of these for biological weapons, the misuse of these for cyber. Long-term worry is, is much more existential, but at the moment, I think the Chinese conversations are largely very constrained by concerns about bio threats and cyber threats. The long-term threat goes something like this. When I talk about AI, I talk about it as human-generated. So you or I give it, at least in theory, a command. It may be a very long command, and it may be recursive in the sense it starts with a human judgment. There is something technically called recursive self-improvement, where the model actually runs on its own, and it just learns and gets smarter and smarter. When that occurs, or when agent-to-agent -agent interaction that's heterogeneous occurs, we have a very different set of threats, which we're not ready to talk to anybody about because we don't understand them. But they're coming. <laughs>